So we're late into 2022, which means almost all Android OEMs have released their latest hardware, including Google. If you're a Pixel enthusiast or you're looking at the Made by Google lineup and sizing up these devices, you're probably wondering which 2022 Pixel device is right for me. Well, we're going to hopefully explain which is the best for you. Thanks for watching 95 Google here on YouTube. Remember to thumbs up, hit subscribe, and then tap the bell icon to be among the first to watch our upcoming videos. So the lineup is fairly simple this year. There's the affordable Pixel 6a, which has one foot in the previous generation, the entry level flagship Pixel 7 and the top of the line Pixel 7 Pro. There's a little more nuance to it though than just that, but the crux of the lineup is cheap, standard and then flagship. Unlike a regular buyer's guide though with pure specs and stats, we just want to answer your most asked queries in a simplified manner. So here's everything you need to know about the 2022 Pixel cohort. Our first question is, what size smartphone do you prefer? Well, aside from internal changes or hardware changes, there are noticeable size differences between the Pixel 6a, the Pixel 7 and the Pixel 7 Pro. The Pixel 6a is by far the smallest and lightest of the bunch at 6.1 inches and 178 grams. This might be important to you as pocketable smartphones are actually in short supply. However, the regular Pixel 7 chassis and dimensions and of course the screen itself are quite close in size to the Pixel 6a. This is only really noticeable side by side. From afar, they're pretty similar. Smaller bezels do help the Pixel 7 almost encroach upon the Pixel 6a. It is substantially heavier though, heavier at 197 grams and with a 6.3 inch screen, but it does have upgrades thanks to a more premium materials being used here in areas such as the metal camera bar. The Pixel 7 Pro is the biggest and heaviest Pixel smartphone of 2022, coming in at 6.7 inches and weighing in at 212 grams. What's evident when we look at the dimensions though, which you should see on screen right, right now, is there really isn't a small Pixel phone in the traditional sense. If you hate six plus inch screens on smartphones, you might wanna look at something smaller like the Asus Zenfone 9, which at 5.9 inches comes out with an out and out flagship specification or spec sheet and looks like one of the better smaller phones that you can pick up. We also wanna ask you, what do you care about when it comes to display refresh rate? There's been a lot of complaints online about the Pixel 6a with this regard, considering this is a 2022 smartphone after all, as it does ship with a 60 hertz screen. When compared directly to some other sub $500 smartphones, it's a bit disappointing, especially in global markets where there's a lot of cheap phones from the likes of Xiaomi and Realme out there that offer high resolution and high refresh rate panels for under that price point. When compared directly to the other late 2022 Pixel releases though, it does paint a quite clear picture the Pixel 6a has a 60Hz 1080p AMOLED panel, the Pixel 7 has a 90Hz 1080p AMOLED panel, and the Pixel 7 Pro ships with a 120Hz 1440p AMOLED panel. You can see these obvious stepping quality there. All three screens though, they're excellent at their respective price points. What's interesting is that this year, you can actually drop the Pixel 7 Pro's display to 1080p if you want to. That isn't a function that is present on any other Pixel smartphone released today. One important thing to note though is the actual type of screens used across the three 2022 Pixel devices. Two of these models come with flat screens and only the Pixel 7 Pro includes a curved screen. This could potentially be a huge turnoff for you and a big reason to pick the Pro over the 6a and the 7 for some people. Many commenters in our videos though do say that they prefer flat screens and that is catered for with these two non-Pro devices for what it's worth. So if you prefer a flat screen, Look at the Pixel 6a and look at the Pixel 7. If you want a curved screen, 7 Pro all the way. We also want to ask, do you really need the latest and greatest processor? Over the past few years, it's probably fair to say that Google has become less concerned with raw specifications than most other Android OEMs. This trio of Pixel devices is separated by Google's internally and first generation processor and second generation processor respectively. The Pixel 6a comes with last year's first gen Tensor chip. This is still a powerful processor for a mid-range phone to sport, which means when compared directly to the competition, the Pixel 6a is an enticing option. Given that the Pixel 7 and 7 Pro are currently the latest and greatest Google smartphones, they ship with the second generation Tensor G2. The on-paper performance gains are said to be 20% over the previous gen, but overall you might not necessarily see that because in daily usage, I don't think you'll notice much of a difference between the Pixel uh, 2022 de devices overall. The Tensor and Tensor G2 do allow for things such as on-device machine learning tasks like Magic Eraser or faster image processing and those kind of tasks. Gaming though is an area which both chips are capable. 
but behind the best Qualcomm SoC, so it's something to think about if you are a hardcore gamer. However, I will say that the inclusion of higher RAM configurations might prove useful if you're a power user on those newer models. The Pixel 6a has 6GB of RAM, the Pixel 7 has 8GB, and the Pixel 7 Pro has 12GB of RAM. This is another way which we think the specifications do help create a clear and concise upgrade or purchase path. Picking a device with lots of RAM should also help increase longevity. That said, the RAM management on the Pixel phone seems to be pretty good and you won't necessarily see lots of applications run out of memory or have issues. Another thing to consider is, is face unlock important to you? Because 2022 sees the return of face unlock to the Pixel series. Sadly though, this is limited to the newest models and is offered alongside an in-display fingerprint scanner if you prefer that method. Unlike on the Pixel 4 though, this is entirely software based on the Pixel 7 and 7 Pro and does require that new Tensor G2 processor to function. Maybe it will get back ported in future, but the improved selfie camera does help make this possible on these newer versions. On Pixel 6a, you don't have face unlock at all. The in-display fingerprint scanner though is vastly improved over the inconsistent Pixel 6 series readers. All three phones unlock slowly compared to some of the competition, but reliability has taken a step up when using the second gen scanner over the first gen. It's something to note if you do want to pick up this phone because you have those extra biometric security option. Do you really need face unlock? If so, look at the Pixel 7 series. When we talk about cameras, I also have to ask, do you desperately all want a telephoto zoom lens? Because these camera systems of the 2022 models are actually quite separated. The Pixel 6a's usage of a practically ancient IMX363 12 megapixel main sensor for that rear camera setup does put it quite far behind the Pixel 7 and 7 Pro. Even so, the older camera system still just about hangs in there despite the fact that the newer models have a 50 megapixel isocell GN1 sensor at the heart of them. They just seem to offer substantial leaps in the quality of all types of photos as a result of that new sensor being utilized. What's interesting though is that the Pixel 6a does have the same ultra wide angle lens which you'll find on the Pixel 7 and 7 Pro. That's one area where these systems do actually converge in terms of camera capabilities and you probably won't notice too many differences when taking landscape or those wide angle shots. The only major change in the 2022 flagship Pixel Duo is the inclusion of a 5x telephoto zoom lens on the Pro model specifically. It does actually offer 30x hybrid digital zoom with excellent tack sharp images as far as that 20x range. If you value mobile photography, then we have to say the Pixel 7 Pro is the biggest and best of these to choose from. It also has a macro mode which utilizes the ultra wide and a little bit of software to achieve that, which sadly doesn't seem to be available on the 7 for whatever reason. There are also a few extra features that are made possible on these devices with that newer Tensor G2 processor with things such as improved video recording modes, which does include 4K UHD 60fps on all lenses, although you can record 4K UHD 60fps on the rear setup on the Pixel 6a. There's also 10-bit HDR video for the first time on a Pixel. We will say all of the 6a modes do make the jump to the 2022 Pixel models, as you'd kind of expect. But overall, the best camera in the setup is the Pixel 7 Pro. The Pixel 7 is fairly good and the 6a is a little bit or quite far behind given it has an older setup available. So which 2022 Pixel device should you be choosing? Well, in our opinion, the best all-rounder is the Pixel 7 as it's the best value device in this 2022 made by Google lineup. The Pixel 6a is, make no mistake, it's a great entry-level smartphone, but when the Pixel 7 starts at $599 in the US, and the Pixel 6a starts at $449, we think that, that extra $150 garners enough upgrades to consider it a worthwhile endeavor. If you want the biggest and one of the outright best Android smartphones available today, then we have to say that the Pixel 7 Pro is a phone that you should definitely consider, and it stacks up against the best Samsung smartphones, at least uh, all these other smartphones on Android wholesale. There's also a thing we need to consider as well. The Pixel 7a should arrive at some point in 2023. That might confuse matters a little bit further, but for now, of this trio, the Pixel 7 is the best value package and is enough of an upgrade over the 6a to be our pick for most people out there, especially if you're confused about which is the right one for you. Hopefully though this has helped you pick the right model for you and we're actually basing all of this information that we're giving you on the recommended retail pricing structure too. So that's 449, 599 and 899 because we think deals make this a little bit more difficult to decipher but you can always refer to this if you do see a good deal on one of these trio. 
I want to ask you though, what have you chosen or what you think of choosing? Let me know down in the comment sections below. I think it's always really interesting to hear thoughts from our audience, especially as you, most of you are quite pixel engaged. I'm actually going to go pro this year for a little bit, but I do much prefer the sevens design on flat screen, but that telephoto zoom lens has really kept me on the pro for a little bit longer than the six pro did last year. With all that said, hopefully you've enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. This is Damien with 95 Google, and I will speak to you later.